This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but more about that later. So let's do the snow tutorial. I'm going to delete everything and make what I'm going to call an emitter. Now the theory behind what I want to do is I want to make a bunch of points. Each one's going to be a snow particle and they fall based on a certain rule. Although I don't want to make all my points in the beginning because snow is dynamic and it should change from frame to frame. So instead, this is where the simulation nodes come in. So this emitter enters the simulation nodes. We make points and then it feeds back. When I play this for a while, you're going to see we get an error that says this is not a mesh. And that makes sense because we're feeding this into here and then it's outputting back here, we lose the original grid. So instead, I don't want this to be like feeding into the simulation, but instead kind of be this external thing. And for each iteration, we can join our points with our previous points. So to change the seed dynamically, let's just use a time variable. In fact, we can just take the frame number and now we are populating uh, snow particles. To make it fall, let's just use a set position and say for every frame, move downwards on the Z axis a little. And look at that, but we can randomize this so it doesn't look as boring and predictable. And I wanna take this result, which is going to be too big and divided by, let's say, 50. And also, I don't want this to have the possibility of being zero. You're going to see that some snow is faster than other snow. And to have more control, especially for the user, I'm going to multiply this by a custom value. When it's set to three, it falls uh, substantially faster. I'm going to go for one and a half for now. If you add something to the x-axis, it's going to blow in the wind. If you make that weaker, it will look a bit more realistic. And there's no, like, turbulence or wind or anything like that. In other words, we need randomiz randomization. So I'm going to take this offset vector and basically add, I'm going to do a vector math addition, a randomization thing. I want this to have some level of continuity, so I'm going to use a noise texture. And we always need to center this, which is why I subtract by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And yes, we have turbulence. Some might say too much. Scale it by, let's say, 0.1. Not, not bad, really. And make the scale of the noise, this is kind of like the scale of the turbulence, something lower, like maybe one and a half. So now when I simulate it, it has kind of bigger wind motion. And as always, why not do a bit of randomization? So if it was 0 0.05, maybe slightly above that can be the maximum, and slightly below that can be the minimum. And I want to move on to something more interesting. For example, when the snow collides with something like the ground or any kind of collision mesh, it should stay there. And I'm going to do the simple version for now. We can make this more complex later. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to hit M to put it in a uh, group that I'm going to call collision. And I'm putting it in a collection so that we can have multiple collision objects. And now the question of the day, how do we know that the snow has hit our like collision thing? Now in this case, I mean, it's obvious, right? Like the Z is at a constant Z equals zero. But imagine we have something more complicated going on, like a slope or other geometry. Well, a way to think about this is you can look at a snow particle and instead of like looking downwards to see if it's going to collide with anything, I'm actually going to do the opposite. I'm going to look upwards and see if it hits anything because if it does hit a surface, that means that it's gone too far and the position it should be mapped to is where this collision is. In other words, I need this information imported in here. So I'm going to bring in the collision collection. I think you set it to relative. And another important thing is you want to realize instances. Now we've uh, turned it into a mesh. So I'm going to use a raycast in reference to this collection. In what direction? Up words. That's a bit of a simplification. I can make it more advanced in a future tutorial. And if this is a hit with our collision collection, we want to send it to the hit position. It's honestly pretty simple. I can set position again, and this time we're going to map to the hit position. I only want to do it if this is a hit. And yes, indeed, it does not, you know, go past it and it collects on the uh, floor. Although if you're paying like very close attention, you're going to notice that the things that hit the ground are still moving. In fact, I want this like set position from before to only be active for, I guess, snow that hasn't already collided. That's simple enough. We can take a store named attribute. So this is going to be in the is hit. I want to set this has hit, like it's already hit, uh, to one. And then we can take this set position, which remember is subject to gravity and turbulence. We take the uh, named attribute called, um, what's it called? It's called has hit, connect it here. Except if you think about it, well, let's like play the simulation. Uh, nothing's happening, right? It's just distributing points. If you think about it, we almost want the inverse, right? So I'm going to do a subtract nah, subtraction. Yes. Okay. So it's literally just collecting here. And if I move this plane up, uh, it seems to work, right? I'm going to add more geometry. Geometry. And yes, it is kind of collecting on any surface. So if I add in a cube, when we play this, it's also going to collect on the cube. At this point, we may as well bump up the density. Uh, you got this kind of situation going on. So this is what our scene looks like with some nice lighting. And the size of this, I think, depends on the uh, point radius. If I set point radius to something much smaller, so like 0.01, uh, now when this is created, our snow is smaller. So instead of like 0.01, let's connect something like 0.01 to like 0.003. And you're going to notice that this actually simulates quite quickly and you can do even better once you do calling and all this and that's going to be in a future tutorial if people are interested it's just like bake the simulation it will be much much faster yeah we have a lot of snow and indeed as the snow falls you can see it kind of leaves maybe a little 
blurred, but a um, actual like silhouette of where it shouldn't be. And there you go. That is the snow tutorial. One file is going to be available in the description. It's on Patreon. This is just iteration one. And now let's talk about our sponsor. And as we talk about our sponsor, which is Squarespace, I thought it'd be a fun idea to have snow falling on the logo. Anyways, if you didn't know by now, Squarespace is the best. It's the number one place to build a website. There are templates that will get you a website quickly. No knowledge of the HTML. Three features I'm going to tell you about is one, you get data analytics, which means you know who is going to your website. Two, Squarespace comes packed with a content library that saves any like file, image, whatever that you've used in your website. And a third thing I want to tell you about, to make Squarespace work, you just drag around these blocks or squares, just designed to your heart's content. So you can go over to squarespace.com and build yourself a website, see if you like it. And when you're ready to take that thing live, use my link in the description for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. We did it, boys. Snow.